Hi, this is Supali from English Academic Facilitator. Thank you for tuning in and welcome to my channel. This video series is designed for those who are preparing for International English Language Testing System or what we call IELTS for academic purposes. This lesson is specifically targeted for those who aim for a higher score and these important tips would help you reach bands 7 to 9 without much difficulty. In IELTS academic writing, your writing skills are assessed in two different genres. One is an expository writing and the other one is an argumentative writing. In task 1, you need to structure your essay by using factual evidence to explain a specific topic while the second one requires to collect, generate and evaluate evidence and establish a position on the topic in a concise manner. For both tasks, you are supposed to use academic language that should be clear, concise, focused and structured piece of writing backed up by evidence using formal tone and style. So before everything, it is important to understand what you are expected in this piece of writing. This is a sample question for IELTS Academic Writing Task 1. The data is shown in two bar graphs. The topic to be discussed is the computer ownership between 2002 and 2010. This topic is divided into two groups. One is as a percentage of the population and the other is by level of education. Your task is writing a summary of the provided data by selecting main features including comparisons where relevant. It is vital to concentrate on key instructional words such as summarize, selecting, reporting, main features and comparisons. IELTS writing task 1 is worth 33% of your total writing marks. You will be marked 25% on task achievement, 25% for coherence and cohesion and another 25% on vocabulary while another 25% is for grammar. The data provided for this task is collected in different ways. It can be a line graph, bar chart, pie chart, table, diagram, map or a mixed chart. Now let's see the basic requirements of this task. Firstly, it should be written in formal style using 150 words spending 20 minutes. So you have to well plan and structure your essay within this given frame. Mostly the essay should be written in present tense but sometimes you need to shift uh, into past or future uh, tenses as well. Another important factor to note is that you need to get rid of basic language and replace it with academic language. We are discussing the academic vocabulary you have to use so make sure you are well versed with academic language before you sit for the exam. Another important fact to consider is use of synonyms. As you are penalized for repeating the same word or structure, you are supposed to use variety of academic verbs, nouns, adjectives, hedging words and transition words plus variety of complex sentence structures. Remember, you won't be able to reach band 7 or above if you use simple structures frequently. Keeping all these rules in front of your mind, you have to organize your essay logically in minimum of 5 paragraphs. It should include an introduction, overview, uh, 2 or 3 body paragraphs and the conclusion. This overview is compulsory for those who attempt to reach the band 7 and above. Remember, you shouldn't repeat the question and need to identify the keywords in the question and paraphrase by using synonyms. As everything else has exceptions, this too is allowed to use the same word if a synonym isn't available for that particular word. 
Now let's see what academic writing is. Academic writing is a clear, concise, focused and structured piece of writing backed up by evidence using formal tone and style. We'll discuss it in detail. Formal language is characterized by the use of standard English, more complex sentence structures, infrequent use of personal pronouns and lack of colloquial or slang terms. Longer sentences are more prevalent in formal writing. You need to be as thorough as possible with your approach to the topic and each main feature needs to be introduced. You need to state main points confidently and support your argument with evidence. Abbreviations must be spelt out in full and the writing should be done in third person as the formal writer is disconnected from the topic. When it comes to the tense, you have to choose the tense by looking at the data. In your IELTS graph, chart, map, diagram or table, you might find dates. If there are no dates mentioned, you have to write in present tense. If the dates are in the past, you have to use past tense. If the dates are in the future, you have to use future tense. And if the dates are spanning both past and future, you have to use both past and future tenses. As I mentioned earlier, you are penalized for repeating words and structures in your essay. So use synonyms to avoid repetition. And when it comes to structures, you need to use variety of complex structures to make your writing more academic. Frequent use of simple structures will drop your level to 5 or 6. You need to associate with specific academic nouns in order to refer to ideas in your writing. Terms like subject, issue, theory, model, nature, principle, etc. should be included uh, in your academic diction. Here you have some more specific nouns connected with ideas and phenomena such as aspect, feature, motives, study, topics, theme, etc. Learn these words. Here are some reporting verbs you have to replace with the basic verbs written in blue. You can select some synonyms that are familiar with you and use them in your writing. You can visit thesaurus.com for further clarifications. Here are some academic adjectives to be used. These are some academic adverbs that you can use for different purposes. Intensifiers, restrictives, hedges and additives. Hedging language is uh, extensively used in this type of writing. The verb hedge means to avoid making a clear, direct statement or committing yourself to a particular decision. It allows you to be academically cautious to acknowledge the degrees of uncertainty in your statements and claims rather than claiming something is an absolute truth or fact. Hedging language is also known as cautious language or vague language to make them less direct and to limit or qualify claims and statements we make. Hedging is achieved in many different ways including introductory verbs, lexical verbs, model verbs and that close and too close. Learn the examples shown here. Transition words present the writer's thoughts in an orderly manner clarifying vagueness and demonstrating comparisons. Transition words illustrate relationships between other words and phrases. They are divided into few categories as they function different tasks. They add more information, compare two similar points, contrast viewpoints, emphasize ideas, reflect sequence and show the effect or conclusion. Use these words when and where necessary but make sure you are not overusing them. 
you can also learn these transition words for summary, reason, condition, generalization and concession. Once again, I'd like to remind you the necessity of using complex structures to achieve a higher score in IELTS. A complex sentence consists of an independent clause plus a dependent clause. This dependent clause starts with a subordinate conjunction or a relative pronoun, a subject and a verb, but does not express a complete thought without the independent clause. Let's see how your use of grammar is marked in IELTS Academic Writing Task 1. If you attempt complex sentences with less accuracy, you drop to band 5. If you use a mix of simple and complex sentence forms, you reach band 6. To reach band 7, you need to use frequent error-free variety of complex structures with few grammatical errors. For band 8, you need wide range of structures. So this is how you reach the levels for IELTS writing skills. Here are some examples for complex and passive voice structures you can use in your writing. One way of constructing complex sentences is using subordinating conjunctions such as after, although, as, because, before, how, if, once, since, then, the, that, though, till, until, when, where, whether, while, etc. And the other way is uh, use of relative pronouns such as that, which, who, whom and whose. This is a checklist of language to avoid in academic writing. Uh, do not use contractions, uh, not uh, don't, uh, doesn't, won't. You have to use do not, does not will not uh, do not use colloquial vocabulary uh, you can't you can't use uh, chatty language avoid using run-on expressions uh, do not use rhetorical questions place adverbs within the verb avoid bullet points avoid writing numbers for below 10 and you can uh, you have to word uh, these numbers and above 11 you can use the numbers avoid long list of numbers avoid symbols uh, you can use symbols for currencies and percentages. Now, everything required for a perfect piece of writing is within your reach. Now, let's see how to plan and structure your essay. You need to organize the facts logically in five paragraphs. You have to open your essay by paraphrasing the topic, then include overview. Describe main trends, stages or differences in this paragraph. Uh, then take uh, the two groups separately and highlight the important features in body paragraphs. And finally, conclude your essay by summing up the main point or points. Well, you got all the resources within your reach now. Make sure you are well versed with all the tools before you start your writing. If you are ready, let's practice a sample writing task in my next video. Till then, bye-bye.